Command the stage in your own life. The Growing Bolder advice from legendary musicians that could help you live a longer, happier life. Then... He always pursued everything with the belief that it was going to work out, that there was going to be a positive outcome. It was infectious. It was impressive. He was a marketing mastermind who specialized in lessons about life, how his family used his words to create a lasting legacy. And see why we say 70 is the new 70. Rock and roll has no age limit, and we'll show you how one Hall of Famer is smashing stereotypes every day, now on Growing Boulder. The moral of the story is really follow your heart. Live your life to the fullest. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't do it. So get out there, take some chances, find something you love, and make it your lifestyle. Make no mistake about it, it's a revolution. Can what you do for a living actually extend the length of your life? Absolutely. But more importantly, it can improve the quality of your life. I'm Mark Middleton. And I'm Bill Schaefer. We're going to meet three legendary musicians, all of them world-renowned, all still impressing audiences, and all in their 70s and older. They never got rich, but even now, late in life, they sure love what they do. They are legends of the clarinet. three of the most accomplished players of our time. Of them, Michelle Zukowski is the youngest. I'll be 75 in a few months. What's that like? What, being old and not beautiful anymore? <laughs> Well, she's still beautiful and still exceptional. And get this, Michelle was clarinetist with the Los Angeles Philharmonic for 54 years. That's some gig. Yeah, my first gig was not as good. That was um, folding clothes in the laundromat. This is like my, that was my second gig was the LA Philharmonic, so. Yeah, so I preferred that one a little better. But even that pales in comparison to Stanley Drucker, who was part of the New York Philharmonic for 61 years. I'm 88. You know, I can't deny it. If you go on Wikipedia, they say I was born February 4th, 1929. Well, while you're checking Wikipedia, look up young Eddie Daniels. And so here I am, 75. Did you hear, you didn't hear that? So I'm 75. I don't believe it. And uh, there's a different sensitivity when you're 75 and you've still got guts and cojones. Eddie has plenty of both. And he also has multiple Grammys. What sets him apart is he's a virtuoso in both jazz and classical. He's credited with revolutionizing a new style of music that blended the two. But their ages, 74, 88, 75, is the clarinet some type of mystical wand of longevity? Play the clarinet because it's an aerobic exercise a little bit if you do it right. And so that in itself of playing the clarinet, it just does something to us. Music, when you play it, takes you out of your brain, chatter, words, conceptions, and especially jazz. Did you ever think back in those days that one day, at the age of 88, you're still gonna be performing? Well, <laughs> you didn't hear me yet. <laughs> 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 
But when we did hear Stanley play, you could almost see the years melt away. His breath is fluid and strong. His fingers nimble and precise. The result of decades of experience, both with his instrument and the places it's taken him. Well, you saw the world. You know, we were in every continent, uh, many cities of the world, uh, many, many different halls, and just the, the people that you played with. When Michelle Zukowski joined the LA Philharmonic, it was 1961 and a different world. At just 18, she was one of the youngest, and there were no other females. I don't know, I got in early. I was the only girl, and now there's 50% of us. I think now there's really 50% are women or maybe more. What was it like to be one of the only women? Well, think, I was 18, and there were a bunch of guys, and, uh, yeah. It's the perfect gig, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was awesome. And that's the stuff legends are made of. Let's see what's on here. And all three agree that even at this stage, life is awesome. Well, my wife's favorite expression is if you don't die, you get older. So that's what age means. We haven't died yet. <laughs> I'm the same as I was as a kid. I'm working on, oh, how do I make that note nice and how do I make that note nice? That's so much better than being in an office and having a boss. Even more important, Eddie says he's adopted a simple philosophy over time that has not only made him a better player, but a better person as well. There's no tomorrow. Da, da, da. There is no such thing as tomorrow. You start looking at tomorrow, then there's no now. So, you know, it's, it sounds hackneyed and trite, but, you know, how do you be here at the present moment doing what you're doing, not thinking about tomorrow, not thinking about yesterday? Those are all thoughts that get us, take us away from what we're doing at the present moment. So yes, the accomplishments of all three have led to full and vibrant lives, but as Daniel says, perhaps the key to their longevity and vitality is that they've learned to truly live in the now. How long do you want to keep playing? Forever. It's a meditation. It's a gift. Isn't it interesting how music is one of those things where if you just listen, you don't hear age. And that can be true about what you do as well, because when you do things well, when you combine technique and passion and experience, your work stands on its own. Not only will others want to keep you around, but chances are you probably won't want to quit either. Yeah, it's exactly why it is so important to find something that you love and then make it your lifestyle. Having a sense of purpose is pretty strong medicine. It can keep you socially connected, physically active and creatively engaged in everything around you and all are key ingredients to living the growing bolder life. Well you'd certainly think that becoming a rock star would be another way to live life to the fullest and Bobby Kimball loved it. He was the lead singer for the band Toto but when things fell apart he had to make a difficult decision between once again seeking fame or just being happy doing the part that he really loved and that was singing. Toto was one of the most successful bands of the 80s and the voice of Bobby Kimball was one of the big reasons why. 
with hits like Rosanna, Africa, and Hold the Line reaching the top five. The band's songs helped define the sound of a generation. And then, at the height of its popularity, the band fired Kimball. Bobby tells Growing Boulder that only one thing could bring him joy again, hitting the road to perform live music, and so he did, and he still tours more than 250 days every year. You know, Cindy Lauper burst onto the scene as a wild and crazy pop character, pretty much defining the new era of MTV. Her song, Girls Just Want to Have Fun, helped put the new network on the map and it became an anthem for the 80s. When that decade went away, Cindy did not. That's because singing and creativity have always been her passions, not stardom. She's taken risks exploring her voice and her message as she's reached out to other genres. And then there's this guy, Tommy Johnson. He's got some of the fastest fingers in the business, but nobody knew it because he was terrified to put it out there on social media. When he overcame his fear, he became an overnight sensation. And that's not bad for a guy in his 70s. He says hearing from fans all over the world has made him feel like he has a whole new life. So what have you always wanted to try? Take a chance and give it a chance. Don't be afraid to embrace what makes you, you. In fact, you can find even more inspiration at growingbolder.com slash TV. Well, anyone who's faced with a challenge like disease or tragedy has to keep surviving and thriving. How we face those obstacles really is a big part of growing bolder. Yeah, after all, life will challenge every single one of us. And as they say, the only thing that we can control is how we react. In the case of the Sane family, reaction turned to positive action and now a lasting legacy for a marketing mastermind. Friends and colleagues have come to celebrate the launch of iBrand, a new book by first-time authors Pamela and Olivia Sane. The book is a tribute to their late husband and father, Gary Sane, a marketing visionary who passed away suddenly and unexpectedly in 2012 at the age of 61. Olivia was 23 at the time. I had a very rough time getting through it. I was lost. My dad was my compass and he was my role model and my best bud. So Olivia was living with us when, when Gary passed away and so we were you know unpacking the office and uh, that's where it all began uh, with, with Olivia. The book started out as just me going through my dad's office looking for words of wisdom because that's what I desperately needed from him. I needed guidance and I didn't know where I was going to go in life. I didn't realize how many people he mentored. I did not know all of the good that he did. As president and CEO of Visit Orlando, Gary Sane's marketing campaigns helped Orlando become the first city ever with more than 50 million annual tourists. Under his leadership, Orlando became the world's number one destination for tourism and business travel. He had great energy and it was infectious. Um, he was the kind of person to work with where he'd give you a list of 10 things to do and before you left the room he'd ask you if the first eight were done. He was a very positive influence on a lot of people for a lot of reasons, um, all good, no bad, and you could easily uh, connect with him because he somehow always asked the right question about getting to know you better. Gary always made people feel good. Always. When you were around him, when you were with him, when he walked in the room, he brought the energy up. He always pursued everything with the belief that it was going to work out, that there was going to be a positive outcome. And it was infectious. It was impressive. Sane inspired all around him to live their best possible life, and he always led by example, including doing 1,200 push-ups on his 61st birthday. I wanted to motivate my staff because we're doing a uh, sort of a wellness program. And I figured if they saw me do this many push-ups, maybe it would mo motivate them to do something like, uh, you know, ride a bike five miles or walk two miles or do 100 sit-ups or whatever it may be. So this is a way for everyone to get involved. 
More than two decades ago, Sane trademarked the term iBrand, years before iPod, iPad, and iPhone, and began writing about the importance of personal branding, a term no one else was using at the time. Yes, he was a pioneer in branding before, you know, people like, you know, Kim Kardashian and all those people that are just basically living off their personalities and their personal brands. So he was, uh, I guess, a, a tremendous uh, pioneer in that sense. Sane wanted to write an iBrand book when he retired, so Pamela and Olivia decided to write it themselves, to share the wisdom of a man ahead of his time and to share their love for a man taken before his time. I really questioned, what would Dad think? Am I doing it right? But I am very spiritual and I had a lot of dreams of Dad, and I feel like he was delivering messages to me so we could accomplish this and pull it off. So we reached out to people that knew Gary, worked with him for many years and wanted them to share life lessons and also testimonials about how these personal branding, these iBrand principles really are put into place in real life. I've taken younger people that I mentor and I've used Gary's iBrand idea to teach them how to market in the legal field. The result of Pamela and Olivia's collaboration is iBrand, a guide to building the personal brand you desire and a tribute to a marketing mastermind. I think he would be quite impressed with them and, and I think that what he would appreciate is that they took his teachings that you should follow your passion and that's exactly what they did to write this book. We really hope his legacy continues to inspire other people and uh, he was a really good man and we loved him so much and when you love somebody like that you don't want him forgotten. In their grief Pamela and Olivia Sane were inspired by the man they mourned. Encouraged by his message of hope and optimism they found their way forward. And I know our names are on the book but it would not be a book without dad. And mom and I could not have done this without each other. You can come back from loss. Grief is very hard. People think you get over it, you don't, you don't get over it, you get through it. But this kind of gave us a new life, a new path. What an amazing and heartfelt tribute. Of course, how we react to loss is a very personal thing. And as Pam says, you never really get past it, but you can get through it one day at a time with the help of those around you. Well, it seems that the best way to keep the memory of a loved one alive is to take what you admire most about them and make it part of who you are. You know, as a, as a neurosurgeon, I don't treat someone with a spinal cord injury and, and, and arbitrarily predict failure. That would be the worst thing I could possibly do. We don't know what the outcome is going to be. There is no crystal ball in healthcare. So we really strive for the exception. We really try to realistically give every person, every patient, hope that they can achieve a result that's better than the average. If you aim for average, you're going to get average or less. And, and, you know, so we really, really try to prepare people to be the exception. You know, I think that's a much healthier, much more positive outlook on recovering from some of these severe injuries. You can find more advice and some inspirational Growing Boulder minutes at our website, growingboulder.com slash TV. Remember when you were a kid and you tried to imagine what being a 70-year-old was like? Well, let's just say that 70 isn't like that anymore. Yeah, 70, 80, 90, even 100 can be energetic, passionate, and adventurous. You just have to decide to start growing bolder, and you don't have to look much further than Rock and Roll Hall of Famer Roger McGuinn. We caught up with Roger on his 70th birthday. Look in his camera and see what I... How do I look? Look here. How does, look, how does she look on camera? She's perfect. Yeah. She looks great. There you go. Roger McGuinn spent his 70th birthday at home with wife Camilla and his newest passion, editing video for a new DVD. It starts off with a little sci-fi thing, and then we got uh, Bruce Springsteen talking, and later, a little later on we got Tom Petty talking, and. And we, we go into some concert footage here. Camilla, Roger McGuinn at 70, what's that like? Are you talking about Roger McGuinn, the guy who puts on his hat, puts on his boots, and walks on stage? Yeah, that, that guy. That or the guy who takes out the garbage. <laughs> well, you know the guy that takes out the garbage. What's it like living with him? Uh, 
You know what? It's been an adventure, just a total adventure. It's, it's been fun, a lot of fun. He has um, a way of enjoying every day and waking up enjoying the day. But he also is a, a man who cares about knowing God. He cares about knowing me. And he's more sensitive to me than I am. So he can, he can kind of read what I need in that day as you're, the day goes on. You're a lucky woman. I'm very blessed, yeah. I think about myself as kind of an actor who plays Roger McGuinn sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, and I do take out the garbage and, and that, that takes about half an hour and I go, man, I wish we were on the road again. It's like, <laughs> I love the road. You don't have to take out the garbage. Roger and Camilla will soon be back on the road, traveling coast to coast, concert to concert, with a stop in Tucson to celebrate his mother's 102nd birthday. Yeah, I mean, she's 32 years older than I am, and she's still kicking, so uh, it's, it's encouraging. How do you feel at 70, Roger? Do you still feel like Jimmy McGuinn uh, pedaling his bicycle on the streets of Chicago? Yeah, I do. I, I feel probably like 17, 18 in my, in my heart, and uh, I still behave that way a lot of the time. Just a word, if you will, about your relationship with Camilla. I um, mean, you guys just seem uh, maybe inseparable is too strong a word, but, but, but maybe not. We're together all the time, and um, some people wouldn't like that, but we love it. We, we love being together. We love traveling together, seeing new people, eating new places. We have our favorite taco stands in New Mexico and Arizona when we take Route 66 and uh, the back roads of America, and we just have a ball together. Roger and Camilla now control every aspect of their professional lives, managing Roger's career and writing, producing, and distributing his music. And now, at 70, a new wrinkle, producing a Roger McGuinn DVD. We started shooting uh, footage of concerts, and then we got some friends and people to talk about my life and career. Bruce Springsteen, Tom Petty, Judy Collins, Joan Baez, uh, the late Pete Fornatel, a DJ from New York, and Dave Barry, a best-selling author. And it's something that's a, kind of a labor of love. We're putting it together ourselves on Final Cut Pro, and we're editing some video that you gave us. Thank you very much for shooting the folk dad. The DVD documents Roger's unique contributions to American culture, including some rarely revealed stories. We played for Jane Fonda's birthday party, her 21st birthday party, and Peter Fonda had invited us, and Henry Fonda was there, and he was, he was horrified because these guys who, who used to follow us were dancing around, and they were really freaky looking, and they were dancing up to him, and, and Henry was going, what's going on here? And Derek Taylor, who had, was kind of responsible for the whole party, was asking our manager, Jim Dixon, what, what shall I do? I'm, I'm panic-stricken here. And Jim Dixon said, you don't get it. This is the new Hollywood. These people haven't seen anything like this since the 30s. They want this kind of thing, this craziness, this madness. That's why they invited the birds. It's the new Hollywood. From creating folk rock, country rock, psychedelic rock, and more, add ushering in the new Hollywood to Roger's resume, a resume that at 70 is still being written every day. I really think you just have to live each day at a time. And, and I, there was this cartoon a long time ago about this little boy, a little girl talking about uh, every day is a new day, and uh, it's, it's like, a, you know, from God. And that's why they call it the present. So just live for the present. One of Roger's biggest presents was the work of now good friend Pete Seeger, who adapted a song from the Bible in 1959 called Turn, 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 a song that never became a hit until 1965 when it caught the attention of Roger McGuinn. I sang it around, never expecting it to be well known, and this guy I'd never met picked it up and made a hit record out of it. Somebody asked me if I knew Turn, 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 and I pulled out my Rickenbacker and started playing. But I didn't play it like Pete. I played it with a Beatle beat instead. To everything you turn, you turn, you turn. There is a season turn, turn, turn. And the rest is rock history. Happy birthday, Roger. 
What an interesting and inspirational guy. Roger, by the way, is now in his mid-70s, and since we shot that, unfortunately, Tom Petty has died, Pete Seeger has passed away, and Roger's beloved mother, Dorothy, died at 102. All motivation, Roger says, to keep doing what he loves. Yeah, and what's amazing about Roger is he has not slowed down one bit. Still loving life, still loving his wife, still touring the world, and just as creative as ever. Before we go, we want to leave you with one more key to growing bolder. It's an inspirational message about the importance of letting go. Yeah, it's a takeaway that you can apply to your life right now, this minute, to start making it the best it can be. We'll see you next time. Hi, I'm Wendy Chioji. I know someone who was wronged many years ago. She harbors that wrong closely, protecting it like it's precious cargo, afraid to let it go or forgive because somehow that might pardon the offender. You may know that person too, or someone just like her, or maybe it's you. Without her even realizing it, her anger and resentment have become a limiter, getting in the way of forward movement in many aspects of her life. She's trapped. She's stuck in the past. Forgiveness will set her free, as difficult as it may be. Forgiveness isn't for the other person, the one who did you wrong. Forgiveness allows you to release that terrible feeling in the pit of your stomach and opens up space for new feelings, new emotions, new pathways. Forgive for yourself. The only real way forward is to work through your pain and somehow find a way to embrace it to make the most, the most incredible and uh, amazing thing that you could ever do. I thought what Mark said exactly right. for me, because embracing the way and working it through is the best. More information about all of the stories you've seen here today is available at growingbolder.com slash TV. And you can get inspired to keep rebranding aging when you connect with the Growing Boulder community on Facebook. Growing Boulder is available on DVD for $19.99 plus shipping and handling. A companion book, Growing Boulder, Rebranding Aging by Mark Middleton, is available as well for $29.99 plus shipping and handling. And you can subscribe to Growing Boulder magazine for $19.99. Order online at growingboulder.com slash TV. It's